Hello, Miss Mary. Oh, live what? Are we live? Are you live or bait? Or are we Memorex? No, you're live bait. Oh, I'm live bait. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what the hell are you trying to catch? I can't tell you. Uh, because if, if I told you and then you saw it, you might get scared and scared away. No, actually, I, it's a voter. I want it. I want you to catch me one so I can dissect it. <laughs> Hello, Miss Mary in a perfect world tonight. Joining me Hello, here by hostage. <laughs> it's a perfect world. Boy, that's, a, what a horrible it's intro. It's a hard knock life yeah. for us. It's a hard knock life for us. But, okay, sorry. you know, um, <laughs> hey, before we start the even the holos, I got a quick grim story. Now, okay. I play on a game on the computer that what it ends up to be in the end to answer the problem I had is it needs to be shut down completely. And I kept thinking there was a way to beat that. <laughs> and it, it took both Grim and Cirque talking with me at this time earlier for me to really understand. No, you're going to as long as you don't do it completely, it's never going to work the way you want it to. And it finally, light bulb came on. You know those light bulbs that come on when you yeah, understand yeah, the, the answer. Because yeah. you can tell me something a hundred times and it just goes right by me. And then when I finally pay attention and actually listen, <laughs> you know what happens? It wakes. I solve my problem with the information I listen to. <laughs> But it's not, but yeah, but it's not always verbally expressible to other people that, yeah, I got the answer. Trying to tell them the answer I got makes them more confused listening to what I've got to say about it. <laughs> and yet uh -huh. the answer, yeah, it's, that's why I tell them I don't want to learn Danish. Words just make all the fucking problems. <laughs> tell them you want to learn pastry. So thanks again, Grim, for all your technical help one more time. And uh, you want to say hi to the bots and the bonnies that are loitering in the reallibertymedia.com chat area. Well, let's see. Right up top, we got Barman, who is the most splendiferous bot in the channel. Closely followed by Beetle. What hey, the hell? Beetle. What the hell? No. We got Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know? And the lovely Moose Squirrel. Hey, hey Moose Squirrel. Some anti going on in the chitty chat as hey, well as Asmodeus Asmo. Hey, and Asmo. Here, I know Chalcedony with the O. He's got the O going on. He, she, it. Yeah. Hi, Chalcedony. Got some echelon in there too, as well as yours truly, Graham Z or Grammy Mary, however you want to put that. Got some Java Doctor too going on as well and some J Dread. Hey, ha. Hmm. I also hmm. see Meister Brower yeah, here, as well as Poopster and Prince, the Poopster dynamic duo that do Prince. a show on Thursday evenings um, <laughs> here on the RLM. The lovely Miss Kate from down in the great Miss city of Florida. Kate from Florida. Speaking of, speaking of the great state of Florida, let me just put this in the chitty chat. Uh oh. Real quick. Did Trump sell? Did Trump Dude, sell cool. Florida to the Venezuelans? No. Oh, okay. That was just a horrible rumor. Uh, I have no idea. No, I heard he went back to negotiate. He's trying to trade Greenland for California, but he doesn't want anybody in California to know it yet. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody in <laughs> nobody in Greenland wants to. There ain't, there ain't very many of those in there. Don't worry about it. Okay. I see some roams is going on in the chat, as well as the lovely Miss Vanna White, the letter turner of the chat. Weather Dork is right behind Vanna White because, you know, he's hoping that when she bends over to pick up a letter, he can see him a skite. Ah. I also see the Woodman here ah, who's right behind Weather Dork. So, yeah. The Phantom. I think there's some cosmic significance going on there. Some the Phantom. Phantom in the chat. Hey, yeah. Phantom. Phantom. We got CC66. Mm -hmm. We got an Echo. Yoo -hoo. Mm -hmm. I also see Chaskura mm -hmm. and Chaskuranus. Mm -hmm. Lovely cycles. Hello. Honey. Cycles. 
flasher is better half. We uh, all know that. Cyborg noodle show. is also here. May you be touched by the cyborgian noodliness of it all. And duh. <laughs> hey, duh. duh. <laughs> E-Man is here as well as N-Civ because, well, either the civilization is ending, which is not necessarily a bad thing. If you call this civil, then I want nothing to do with it. Um, but if it's the end of civility, well, I already knew that, too. So, I also see some flash thumb that the wow. originator of this show. Some frumpy, frumpy, frumpy. Did you get that link? That was way cool. Uh, the observation deck, that was uh, very cool. Uh, I also see Gromit is here as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor. The Uno, the original one. And ah, the Java Doctor. Mm. I know. Got the original Java and the Java 2. Ooh. It's like Ooh. up and decaf. Yeah. Mm. JJ's 999 is here as well as Kiss Papa Pondergander. He's uh, a gander. Hey, Vinny. 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 Vinny in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even want to know. Well, Papa he Papa says Papa fire in the hole. Here, as I well was... as the real Donnie Wu. I was updating. Oh, you was updating? Yeah. I still don't want to know. Oh, okay. I also see Sock Puppet is here. Hey, Sock. And we got some smart ass in the chat, as well as the holiest Roger ever. Now, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. is that holy as in has lots of holes like mm -hmm. Swiss cheese or ami, 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 ami? Inquiring minds would like to know. Is got some really Vinny Vince. Vinny Vince. Mm -hmm. He's not a Vinny Verde anymore. He's, He's just not. an echo. Oh, <laughs> I see. And some Z picks as well. Uh, remember the movie K Pax? Yes, I remember. The, that, I like that movie. Yeah, that, Kevin Spacey kind of creeps me out anymore, but I like that movie. Isn't that weird? Is you got these people that go, they get paid to pretend they're other people than who they really are. And then when you see them on the film, you go, wow, I wonder if they're really like that or if they're just pretending to be like that. And then it turns out they were even worse than the movie showed. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't. I think killers are just like a step above people that take advantage of kids. Okay, I will. I won't yeah, call right, it what right. you call it. I'm just. It's, I'm gonna it's, go it's with real. It. Yeah, it's real yeah, close. But yeah, but I'm just saying, people that can talk can't necessarily make a decision based on any kind of experience. But that's the world we live in, isn't it? You know, they expect you, hey, you read the book, you ought to know how to do it then. Well, no, that's not how electricity works. Let me clue you. <laughs> you know, it helps to yeah. know what to do to make sure you're not working on a hot line, for example. But, yeah, you know, just because you read the book doesn't mean you can just go right to a thing and know, hey, look at this. And I think that we've all been kind of fun. Razzled dazzled by a lot of bullshit to believe that what you read is true so that you'll be satisfied with that. You never look beyond it. Ah. So what's your take on that bit of crap, little missy? Mm -hmm. Or were you reading? Uh, if you were reading, just go on to something else. I'm just going to go on to something else because actually you were while you were yeah. – Towards the end of that, I clicked on Facebook because I had a little thingy pop up, yeah. and it's the way coolest pumpkin ever. But I'm not gonna, because the only way you can share this to, you know, for people that aren't on Facebook, is to download it on your computer and then re-upload it somewhere else. And I'm not doing it, so tough shit. Okay, you're not. All right, I heard what you're not doing, but I don't know what you're not doing. <laughs> I'm not pushing it's a buttons. It's really cool carved pumpkin because it's coming close to Halloween. Oh, pumpkins. Oh, um, my daughter made me the way coolest t-shirt. Way coolest. I haven't gotten it yet, but she made it for me. She sent me a picture of it on my phone. But it's it's got this witch riding in the in the night with the night sky, and you can see the road beneath mm, it. Yeah. And it says across it. Um, on a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, well, the other day I already commented to you about the one I saw, and I still I haven't found it again. But I'm sure it's going to be pretty popular around the Halloween days when it gets more, uh, you know, more mainstream. People start jumping in and copying and pasting. You'll see ah. that you'll see the really original stuff that started at the beginning of October when no all the Halloweeners weren't ready yet. You know what I mean? The diehard Halloweeners that live. See, and I'm ready. Well, the, I have a Halloween shirt from last year. Hmm. It's got once again a witch riding on a broom with scraggly looking hair, and it hmm. says "Broom hair, don't care." Well, so do you hold the 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 uh, holiday with any regard seriously, or do you just participate because it's fun? Or what? What's your story with it? I love Halloween simply because it's just it's just silly. I mean, kids can you know grown ups can dress up like kids, and yeah, I know the. Um, I've read the history of All Hallows' Eve and the history of, um, yes, Vinny, it's on Facebook. I'll tell you what, I'll share it to Vinny. Mm -hmm. In any case, um, I'd, I don't know that I want to buy into all of the other stuff. I mean, you know, if people want to believe whatever they want to believe, that's mm -hmm. their business, so long as they don't rub it in my face. Right. But I say this as I tell people, you should do this. <laughs> do you really know no i i would say listening to you over the time i've known you that i just take what you say as uh suggestions kind of guidelines here try this you've never struck me with one of these do this or i'll slit your throat from ear to ear kind of women <laughs> Oh, well, no, hmm. I wouldn't do that because that's messy, and I really right. don't want to have to but clean up the mess. You've always been really uh, kind of like throwing things my way, not so much directing by direction, you know, like some kind of authority. You're real nice about it, and you do know well, a lot of things, and i got to give you credit for this because most people, when they learn stuff, the first thing they do is brag about how fucking smart they are. And I appreciate that you don't do that about your knowledge in the area where you're really good. You just give people ideas and, you know, you don't try to be the center of the world because you know that stuff. And it's been really helpful. Oh, well, good. Yeah. See, I, yeah. There's a lot of things that at this point in time, I think I know. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Mm -hmm. Within five minutes, I may know something different and Could have to change. throw that completely out. So. Maybe that's what evolution is supposed to be uh, recognized as. Not this physical generational changes over, you know, bullshit like that. Maybe what the, the, the point of all that was is our intellect develops as time goes by, as a species, not as an individual. Because there are some people that are just spot born with some gift that they don't know how they do it. And... That's not the uncommon thing, you know. That's oh, pretty every, common. I think everybody's got that it's to hey, a degree. Dan, yeah, Some, something that you lean to and you're really good at. Everybody knows that you know, if you got to deal with this thing, go to him. like Grim in a computer. You know, if I have a problem with my computer, I go right to Grim. He's the first person I think of asking to help. Him. And it's not like it's a constant daily. It comes up every now and again, week or two, month, whatever. Something might go on a question. Hey, can you help me with this? And uh, there's other people that I feel are just as qualified to do it. But I, <laughs> I'm, you know, like a, I'm, I'm stubborn in my, uh, in my ways. I think at this point, yeah. Well, you know, I think we're all stubborn in our ways in certain areas and right. then there's areas where we're all a little bit on the flexible side now some people are freaking gumby and they can support, <laughs> you know especially when they're trying to support whatever they're very stubborn about yeah. they can gumby itis with the best of them let me tell you i've seen some people do some twisty twanging gumby moves and it's mm. like damn i hurt just watching you do that all right. Well, then I got a really good topic or a question for you. Here. How would you simplify? Okay. okay, we've got the luxury of radio. Okay. Uh huh. And with radio, you're you're more clear than words on paper. They're 
they're not so uh, they're not interpreted so varied because it's, it's a little bit more specific to speak than it is to write I think yeah yeah because so, you, you get the inflection and all of that fun mm -hmm. stuff but so whereas with writing people quite literally read into a lot of things that that aren't necessarily there well I think we're in a perfect world we're just lied to about the answers to the questions if we got the truth out of the people we seek answers from it would be indeed a perfect world right but We've got shitty electricity. We got shitty food and water. All the, all the necessities are all monitored and controlled and destroyed by bigger people than us, <laughs> so they can make more profit off the hurt. And and if you dare go against the system, well, you know, you know where that goes. We all know where that goes. Because yeah. well, all the system, and the system, um, when they talk about their own, these voter people. The most that they talk about is how badly the system runs. So instead of let's get rid of this fucked up system that has gotten completely out of hand and start over or something. We're intelligent people. We've got internet for fucking sake. There's cameras on every freaking uh, store window in a major city. <laughs> Come on. We couldn't be more connected than we are. Cell phones everywhere. All this shit, right? And instead, we're still using these archaic, Neanderthal fucking ways to survive. I, and I think, remember Jacques, Fre Jacques Fresco, the control freak with the, uh, what was that thing called? The Venus Project. You ever re read or see any of this stuff? Yes, okay. yes. Yes, I have. Okay. I think there was a good and a dark side to both. But I'll give you the mic so I'll be quiet for a minute. <laughs> but I, I was going into that. He had to have it his way. And see, that's not progress. No. Okay, He, but he led me to the point of thinking, what would be good for everybody? That's not a bad thing to start with. Not what's going to make me the most profit off the sheep, but you know what's good for everybody equally. And that's the least popular uh, starting point that we have. Yeah, but see, in this current world not a perfect one but in this current one i don't know that it's possible to come up with something right now that is good for ever equally equally good for everyone because right now there's entirely too many people with the mindset of but i want to be more equal okay sweetheart yeah let me explain this to yeah. you again you have equal and then you have more. Mm. You put more with equal, and there, you lose equal. There is no equal when you put more with it. I'm going to be more equal than the next guy. So my half is going to be a smidgen bigger. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. it's no longer half and half. Because yeah. one of them is a smidgen bigger. There mm. ain't no such critter as more equal. It's like fighting a three-year-old for a cookie. And that cookie's not going to survive. And if you get it back, you won't want it. <laughs> no, because odds are they licked it multiple it, times. And, and crushed it. And probably got a few other bodily fluids yeah, on it that it, you really don't want to have that flavor added to a cookie. But human instinct is to crush with our hands. When, when we're threatened somehow, we, we squeeze and pull towards us. So inevitably, whatever you're holding on to gets crushed being drug to you like some kind of monster <laughs> yeah people are not gentle in life they they grab and pull and they learn it from a real early age it's just the way you it know is what? it's not just people that do that mm. i mean it's the monkey with their hand in the jar syndrome same thing yeah and yeah. and i i caught myself the other day with that because i got a, a can of mixed nuts and there were some brazil nuts in there and so i just went ooh and reached in and scooped <laughs> up and then couldn't get my hand out and I was like <laughs> No, no, I w no. <laughs> the 99th monkey. <laughs> wow, yeah. we found her. <laughs> yeah. Hey, speaking of that, you did, I read I read an article on the internet that excuse me <laughs> that claims that the hundredth monkey is a, another scam 
put together by a couple con men. Probably. That actually never happened. But the story is so fucking wonderful that <laughs> we like to believe it. And then you find out, nah, it's just it's another bit of creative writing. Somebody wanted to make a buck off you, so this is how they did it. And uh, wow. And here we sit, right? Promissory notes in hand, waiting in line to pay for our food. Here we sit, broken hearted, came to shit, and only farted. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and an update on Danish society, folk, is uh, the the two uh, automatic cash machine thing, mabobbers to check out without human, you know, just to be AI. ATMs. Dead mm-hmm. man, there there was lines. People would rather stand in freaking line and be served by a human here than have the uh, be all connected and have this machine know what color your underwear is. They don't want that yet. See, and I don't. I refuse to use those those automatic yeah, or self checkout things. I refuse is, to yeah. use them. They want a lot of knowledge about you to, to even just to hook up. Well, they get it even when you go to a reg- regular register, but mm. I would just as soon chit chat mm. with the. And actually, I did uh, last time I was shopping, mm. stocking up on a few things. It's like, oh crap, we're out of dog food. We're out of. In any case, <laughs> yeah. Um, Living. Last time I was there, I looked at the the little checker as she was starting to check, and I said, having a rough day, and she said, I've got a headache. And the farmer was standing there, and he just kind of looked at me because I instantly went for my purse, and she's looking at me, and I pulled out my little bag that I, of my oils that I carry everywhere I go. <laughs> yeah, you're like a third-degree bag lady because of it, huh? I am. Mm. I am. But I said, so where where does your head hurt? And she yeah. said, you know, she showed me at the temples and base of the skull. And I went, okay. The back, right? You just That's your neck? keep doing your thing. Right. And so wait, I wait, pulled wait. out. Mary, what? what? The back where your neck, the back of your neck base or the top yeah, of your back. head face? Okay. Yeah, right where the skull meets the the uh, spinal column. I used the peppermint oil for that. and I had a headache a couple, I don't know, six, eight months ago, I think, for about 10 seconds because I put the peppermint oil on it and it went away. Yeah, now, it that, does work. Yeah. Well, I just happen to have a thing of past tense that's got peppermint and eucalyptus and frankincense, and it's got it's several different oils in it, but it's in a little rollerball thing. And I said, do you mind if I put some of this on? We'll see if this helps you. And so I put a little bit on her temples, and then I kind of rubbed that in with the heel of my hand, and then I put a wee bit at the base of her skull and kind of massage that in Mm. and then come back around. And by the time I was done doing that, she was done checking all my stuff through. So I just went ahead and paid my thing. Uh. And she just kind of looked at me and said, thank you. And I said, Oh, thank you. And she goes, no for the, and I said, Oh, you're welcome. And just out the door I went, but you know, I looked back and the next person that came up, she was smiling for them. Now I don't know if her headache was gone. I doubt if it was gone that fast, (laughs) But you never know, really don't. I brought a smile. Right, but see, different bodies react at different speeds to the same crap. True. So true. Even if, like, if it's a negative crap, you have some people that have like a, a natural ability to be immune to it, and then you have other people that are weak to it, and it takes them over real quickly. It depends on what it may be. And we're talking everything from aspirin to chocolate to heroin and everything in between. And it all, we react to it somehow, but it's not the same for each person. It's varied. So the government gets a hold of this concept of numbers and they make this chart and the numbers on the chart are got nothing to do with with the real thing they're trying to identify to you. But you don't know that because you're trusting the government. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like with medical, uh, remember those uh, Stasin drugs? What were you telling me about? The, oh, the statin, statin drugs for high it. blood pressure? Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that, with your mom, right. Okay. Well, they had me on a different, on a pill form of something, I, but it was high blood pressure, okay. the, same, the same trap. And what they do is when they take you to the office to test you for it, they make sure you're aggravated or whatever the opposite of it is. To get a low reading or a high reading, these people know what to do to get those readings. 
Yeah. They're not oh, only yeah. yeah, they're not only trained to identify the fucking things. I think they're trained to create them. Well, it's like, okay, my mom's got this angel care thing going on right now because she's got a hip issue and, and she's got someone that comes by the house twice a week and they help her do exercises to work out whatever she got a hitch in her get along, basically. And they're helping her do exercises mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this angel care person takes mom's blood pressure every morning when she's there and she's been recording it. And she says, you know, for your age, your blood pressure is pretty freaking awesome, which, you know, for any age, her blood pressure is, you know, in the average range. Then why do they want her but on the drugs? But she went to the doctor yeah. last week, which yeah. she's not telling me when her doctor's appointments are anymore because she doesn't want me going with her because it makes her nervous. Uh-oh. Yeah. She takes my sister-in-law. But <clears throat> in any case, uh, she went to the doctor last week. And showed the doctor all of these blood pressure readings, and the doctor took her blood pressure, and it was actually in the range that it was when the angel care people were coming by. And she says, well, I still think your blood pressure is a little high, and we're going to keep you on this medication. And I went, mother? Hmm. And she said, I'm going to have your sister-in-law go with me. I don't want you coming down. It's like, mom? Yeah, because they can double talk. Some people end up believing the exact opposite. Well, and my sister-in-law works at the hospital, uh, and I mean, she's yeah. she's in the yeah. maintenance and yeah. and uh, cleaning department, and basically where she's where she's in the floor she's in charge of is like uh, surgical prep and that kind of shit. So she's kind of sort of anal about some of this stuff, mm. but it's like, well, sweetheart, there you go. You know, and then, and that was the other thing I was going to tell you about mm. over on Fake Book that um, it's getting a little bit of traction, but man, I tell you what, there's a lot of people that Fake Book and Twitter are really, really good <clears throat> about oh. um, fact checking or uh, muting you or whatever, but uh, apparently there's a new study out that many of the causes of dementia are actually side effects of prescription drugs. And this was on, I posted this on Facebook yesterday, and all day yesterday it was just fine. But today it got a little fact checker blurb underneath it. It says, this is misleading. Study does not conclude dementia is a side effect of drugs. And it's like, yeah, yeah. 23 hours later, you decide that this is no longer, you're playing with your switch. Yeah, I had to cough, so I, I thought ah, more of okay. more but, muting rather than moving the mic so you could hear my lovely coughing in the background. But ah, I had no idea you'd miss it. Next time I won't mute. Ah, no biggie. It's you're just welcome. that. It irks me that, you know, all of these social media things Mm. that are supposed to be helping people become more social Mm. are so antisocial and they don't let people make up their own frickin mind. It's not, you know, this world is so, especially the education system, so busy teaching what to think. But Miss Mary, if you you think for yourself, if you ask the person you're talking about. They're going to deny exactly what you said. They think they're quite capable of learning. They don't really understand what learning is. They're well, hijacked they're... by this crooked fucking game we play. And yeah. learning learning is doing things, right or wrong, and figuring out what's the best result for you. See, and I think the first key to learning yeah. is unlearning the bullshit other people told you. So I don't have that problem. I never have. I've always been anti every fucking thing, so it's been easy for me. Yeah. Being that yeah. I, I was the outside guy, nobody nobody could tell me what to do. There you go. And I paid the price for that behavior through family and friends, but I've always been able to do what I want. Well, that's a good thing. No, it's not. It's not a good thing. A good thing would have been doing what I was told to, so everybody would have been happy. But I didn't do that. I did what I felt like doing. And I didn't 
didn't balance in their feelings into my life. I didn't think it mattered. You know, I think thought they were making more of it than there was to make of it because I was living my life. and It's none of your fucking business what I do anyway, unless I invite you into it. You know, you don't just walk up to strangers and just, hey, here I am in your life. No, you, there's ways to uh, get through life and interact with people that have like a, I know, like a recipe. And if you do them properly, they work. And if you don't do them properly, eventually they're going to fall apart. Hmm. Now, that's my experience looking back on how things took place, what put me in, in the spot I was in, in living, you know, with, with or without who I was with or without at any given time. It's always been a result of whatever I did. Well, everything is... Right. The result of and, what you did or did not do. So. And I've had no problem accepting my part of, I did that. See, Some people don't. Some people think, well, I got hit by a car. Well, yeah, but you were in front of the car, see, or behind it or on the side, wherever. You put yourself in that spot. There was a lot of ways to get around that. You just didn't do them. Turn left instead of turn right. Stop instead of go. Or go instead of stop. Do something opposite of what you're supposed to do. And in the end, you get a different result out of something. Because the timing changes. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, it's all illusion. It's all in my head. It's all hell. My mind interprets this existence that I'm in with other people. And I've just got ideas that I, I see them this way. Some people agree. Some people don't. But in the long run, it doesn't really... Uh, make any difference to a friendship like me and sir we disagree horribly about some topics they're just not even worth bringing up because we're both on opposite sides on it so we just don't talk about them and when we do it's a it's a joke kind of a ha-ha thing hey because we're so ridiculously opposite on it but uh, never to be cruel and I, I think, well, I think the yeah. only the only really real rule that I think should apply to everyone is don't lie. It's hard to do. Just don't lie. Oh, come on! It's that that's a lot more than you think, though, because oh, I know there I are know. so many things that we're taught to be true that are lies that we don't know are lies till you find out for yourself. Whatever that is, you you discover something. And you go, wait a minute, that's not the truth. That's you deciding. Me telling you is never going to convince you of shit. I know that. This, we're, yeah. we're just talking about ideas and how we see them here. We're not trying to uh, guide the herd in any fucking direction one way or the other. I don't care what game you play or don't play. We're just chitter-chattering on the radio. Something different. Yeah. Yeah, because that mainstream stuff, we all know where that ends. Well, when you're in the mainstream, it's pretty crowded. Lots and lots of, you know, it's like uh, salmon trying to go spawn, bumping into all kind of people. I'd much rather go off. Not anymore. Uh, I read you a couple of days ago that uh, the spawn, uh, the, the uh, salmon industry is starting to fall down it's because they they have over harvested i don't know why the detail there's so many different ways to look at a problem so i don't i don't know i just say everything contributed to it all the negatives put together all right but how that got there isn't the point it's that it got there <laughs> See? yeah whatever yeah that that it got to this point but there yeah and i do agree there are lots of different factors that figure into that and whatever necessities we we depend on they're always controlled by the greediest nastiest filthiest pricks among us and we look up to these people and call them sir <laughs> because they're billionaires and me i think the whole thing is just fucking ridiculous but that's the world I'm in, whether I like it or not, you know, one way or the other. But, geez, what a joke. That one, you know, I was going to say something, mm -hmm. but I kept listening, and now it's gone. <laughs> mm, I'll rattle you back. Well, I was getting, you know, the idea that one person is better in some 
fucking way or more deserving. Here, we'll go with that. Because of a law somebody wrote, you know, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm, there's that more equal shit again. Well, that's also the people that seem to do that are the ones that speak English and think English is the core language of the planet. They, they don't really understand what a minority they are. They just have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of corporate backing behind USA. So English goes along with that company, right? But well, I'll tell you what, English is a very good language for casting spells. We know that. Well, of course, because I've been listening to people that have informed me of that and proven it. There's so much information that backs all this up. Just look. Anyway, go on, Mary. I'm sorry. Clint Richardson no. came to mind, and I got wordy. Well, yeah, because there's so many. There's it's got so many homonyms and so many synonyms and so many imonyms going on, and you can say things in in English, and you know it doesn't have as many descriptive, very detailed descriptive words like. Um, and that was one thing, bless her heart circles taught me that. I think she said it was Greek that has like five different ways to say love, depending on what type of love you're talking about. Whereas with English, we have love period. That's it. That's, that's the word you can use, but it can mean all kinds of things mm -hmm. depending on the situation. Right. And mm -hmm. I Dog think Latin. that's why Mary. Mary. English is such a good language for casting spells because it can be so it can be so articulate and so so definitive and yet be very very vague just to, and open to interpretation all at the same time. Okay, yeah, I agree with that. I just would say it differently. I think it's all it would mean the same thing in the long run. The way I'm, I'm looking at this is, um, hmm. well, no, we'll just go with yours. I, I think I got I got lost in the shuffle myself. Oh, but see, Doc, I know how that see, because I was introduced to the idea that English, in, in the origin of English, it's dog Latin. It was for the peasants, not for the royals. So that means yeah. that the definitions of the second-rate language are going to be different than the the ruling class language, and there's the trap that you don't know exists. You're speaking garbage, and, and you're taught new. You're number one to Joe. My yeah, my book. Oh, we look up to you. And I'm telling you, man, I, when I go to that fucking bar, some people tease me about Trump trying to. Fit, they are they're hoping I'm a Trump supporter so that I get mad because they think Trump's a butt nugget. Right after he pulled that shit with Greenland, he lost. He lost the local people here. That was like the same thing as asking the guy, hey, can I sleep with your wife? I'm in town for a week. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, that's how personally the people take buying. You don't buy countries. What do you, what kind of person are you? So. Hmm. See, and um, it's I funny. didn't take any of that shit seriously. But all right. But. I'd we're in Denmark where they're Danish. They're not American. They see it differently. That's like somebody. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They have a very d d literal, from what I understand. It's like coming to Florida and some you know, uh, oil billionaire wants to buy the state of Florida. What? Are you? People would be like, no, well, you can't do that. I would assume. I would think, well, you're after your fucking rocker. You know, first thing. And I know the state's just a fiction, but I've. I've lived in the fiction so long, I know how to talk about it like it's real. <laughs> Just in case, you know, there's people listening. Well, and see, that's one of those things where, <coughs> excuse me, you can play the game without actually pulling up to the table and taking a seat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like Kino. I'm having my eggs and my, uh, you know, my potatoes over here at the table. And I, I put a dollar on the keno ticket to see if I can't hit a few numbers. And every mm -hmm. once in a while, if somebody does that, they hit it for two, three, four hundred bucks off a dollar bet, just because that they're keeping the thing going, you know. <laughs> anyway, but that's life. That's how I life is not the big disaster drama it is to everybody else that votes and supports Trump and 
lives in a specific country and a state and all that. I just live in a place called something as far as I'm concerned. I don't really care. I don't hold it uh, to heart. It's it's just a place. Just be nice to the people that you encounter and life goes on. Yeah. Been like that for about since 1998. Just don't give a shit, you know, where it can make you angry. Get along with these monkeys. They're doing the best they can do as well. We're, we're just, we're thrown into this fucking pit. <laughs> and then we're deprived of shit and then forced to compete with each other to get shit. And you're going to hurt people while you're fighting your way through to get where you're going. And I yeah. think that it's a, dis, it, it's a, a specific design of the game that we play. It's not a byproduct of it. You don't you don't ever fall off anything. You're shoved off the shit you fall off of. You're you left alone, you'd never fall. So what they did was they they made the roads a matter of law, which made your cars a matter of law. And then they figured figured out how to trick you into giving them ownership of your freaking car to force you to have to license and pay all these taxes and all this freaking shit they did to us right and in the uh -huh. long run it wasn't necessary this could have been done way differently and more honestly and with better products so what we ended up with is a second fucking rate world because people are more concerned about making money than they are about making people happy <laughs> you know i'm not talking about entertainment i mean like a bowl of strawberries that don't have poison in it what happened to that? Yeah. Well, hopefully next year I will have that. We're going up to get um, some more stuff from the farm and, and uh, got a couple of stock tanks at the bottoms hmm. are starting to get kind of rusted out. So they will make great raised beds hmm. and we're going to put strawberries in one. So Yeah, once you learn the tricks and start catching on, and get a little experience. A little experience helps. Because Cirque, mm -hmm. Cirque got some more strawberries this year. But, yeah, if you plan ahead and you figure it out what the way that the plant should grow, where's the best pot, uh, place to get the sunlight for the most. Because uh, when it's growing season, it's like a, 18, 20 hours of sunlight a day for about three, four months there. Three months, give or take. And then Sweet. it's Yeah, we get a lot of sunlight. So, But we have a lot of trees. Yeah. Right. That's because of lots of sunlight. Well, I don't want to trim the trees to get the sun, so I just want to work around everything. And, but it's been, you know, it's been we've been here a few years and tried it and tackled it. And she's gotten shit to grow. It's really cool. <laughs> she well, grew, good. yeah. Well, but we're just me and her. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a grocery store that, so there's no necessity in the neighborhood for anything that we grow. But if we grow too much, she can find somebody, your sister or mom. We've, yeah. we've had uh, enough. Both of, yeah. Yeah. both of my girls have left with grocery sacks full of potatoes. And we're getting ready to finish dumping the rest of the uh, sweet potato tubs. We grew them in tubs this year. See? And, uh, and it always helps. See, in the long run, too. It's, you, save, uh, you don't save a lot of money all at once. But if you can yeah. if you can do that and you can like doing it because it's, it's work, it's not pleasurable to me that uh, going out in the garden thing. I like the inside plants. It's easy. Got away with them. I can make little tiny things grow huge. It's, it's incredible. It's October. I got a green chili growing in the windowsill. <laughs> cool. And then two other plants. What are the other two plants, sir? Bell pepper. And uh, the the other two plants are are sprout. I cut them back so they're sprouting new new life forms. In ah. in October, in a windowsill in October when it should be cold. So I don't have any idea if this is going to work. I'm doing what like we Grim did, experimenting, seeing what's going to happen. You know? See, and I I got ginger to keep growing over winter last winter, and I'm getting ready to harvest. Most of it, because the trick is, mm -hmm. at least from what I'm learning from YouTube and from my own experience, is that <clears throat> you 
you harvest most of it and then you put a few of the ginger rhizomes back in the ground. Mm -hmm. And with our shorter growing season here in, in northwest Kansas, I have to bring it inside so it doesn't get cold too fast. So I have a couple of windows that I can so that they can still get sunlight, mm -hmm. but you know, they don't freeze. And so it doesn't really die back. So I can keep a couple of rhizomes going over the winter time. And then when spring gets here and the last chance of frost is gone, then I put them out on the front step where they get lots of that early morning sunshine. And so, yeah, I'm growing ginger year round now, by golly. But do you, do you recognize how that farming thing brings the best out of people that give it a whirl? Everybody that does it always has a story. Oh, I grew this and oh, I'm growing that. And they're always happy when they're talking about it. It's like growing stuff. Is, there's no bad way to look at that. And I just think yeah. it's a um, it's an underrated way of, of an entertainment. My wife is easily entertained. Like she likes to play in the garden. Me, I, I'm not. I can take it or leave it at this point. But. She really does like it, and she really does grow shit on purpose, and it works. So there you go. It just uh, the more experience you get doing these things, the better you are at them, I suppose. And then every once yeah. in a while, you're gonna have a natural that could do it any you know that particular thing the first time, and boom, they did it right. And that happens occasionally. Yeah. But usually you got people like me that stumble and bumble through it, uh, you know, one year and then, oh, I did that wrong. Okay, well, try it like this next year. <laughs> what's a year? Yeah. Yeah, what's a year amongst friends? Well, and I, I've had a few times where my first year of growing something went really well and it's like, oh, booyah, bonus, I, I can do this. And the next year it didn't do shit. And, hmm. and this year is actually one of those years where this is the first year in probably 15 years that I have not grown a single cucumber. Wow. Not that I didn't plant any. Right. They didn't take. Yeah, I got the idea. Well, they started hmm. growing and either we got bugs or we got oh, floods or yeah. hail or freeze or whatever. But because I planted twice. And both times they got taken out. And it's like, and my mother keeps telling me every time I talk to her. You have any cucumbers? No, Mom. I told wow. you they died this year. Oh man, you grow the best cucumbers. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, so yeah, see, that's what I mean about you know. I, some people call it luck. I don't. Uh, I call it skill. But even skill cannot be uh, like weather conditions and uh, nature. Yeah. Yeah, nature always gets the last laugh. It was like talking about my birthday. You know, I had my plan in my mind about what was going to happen. And what happened was so different than what I planned on. And then what happened was way more interesting than what I had planned. So everybody got um, a better deal than, than I would have expected. And that's kind of the way I like things to be. <laughs> you know, I like to be uh, surprised. You know, mm -hmm. by just what's going on, not by uh, flash and oh, look at this. Of just the normal fucking things in life coming together at the same time and just coexisting for a while. I call it friction. I had to write a book. Cirque says I should write a book, and I've got a title for my book, and my title is Friction. And the definition of friction. It's really a fun definition, too. It's, it's when two different objects try to occupy the same exact place at the same exact time. And when they do that, they create a friction and a heat, discomfort. Ah. People get on nerve, you know. That, that's what friction is. And in, in terms of electricity, when you have that kind of thing that makes a heat a waste, it's waste. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we're so dependent on heat because some of us live in cold places, for example, right? So the way that we look at these ideas are, are limited, I think. And I picked that up from listening to people like Don, Don Carroll, you know, uh, Larry Woods, 
You know, the brainiacs, the people that had a background for years and years in this electrical shit knew what the fuck they were talking about. Not Yeah. Yeah. Not me just repeating something I read on the internet, but these two guys that could wow, they could explain it in simple terms. Yes. Yeah. Make it easy for you. Well, it's a dying breed. We're we're, we're losing. We're losing the people that can do it. So we need, and there's not, it's not like this thing is growing. Whatever this is we're doing, this is it. We're old people that know shit. And just like every generation before us, the, that, the older people don't know shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, yeah. I There's dis- a lot of people that think that the older people don't know shit. And I disagree with that mentality because it was the older people that taught me all the shit I knew that got me to where I'm at now, so to speak. You know, the, the knowledge that I got was from somebody else. It wasn't all my ideas. Crying out loud, I couldn't claim all that. But the only decision-making I could take responsibility, I think that's right, responsibility for is to plan to go somewhere and you know, do a thing, whatever a thing may be. And we were talking about um, time, you know, it's man-made and all this crap. and this, But it's a good way to, to mark your memories as well as to enslave your population. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's got both a good and a bad side, too. It keeps the duality thing alive because a lot of people like that concept good and evil Ta-da. me i'm just looking at it. it's a flip of a coin heads tails whoops yeah. see and good or evil i think depends on your perspective and if you're on the receiving end of it or not and if you benefited from it or not well would you I say th- that i think evil was created by humans Right, but you've matured into these ideas that you carry today. You didn't have them all those years ago. I sure as fuck didn't. I grew into the life I've got today through it. You know, other things that brought me to where I'm at. So I could be comfortable in a place where I don't have to drive a car because I don't really want to do that anymore. You know, and I didn't even know it. It was being free of it. I went, wow. I got no car and while I'm walking because I, mm-hmm. I've been my whole life. I didn't mind walking. Walking was no big deal. But most of my peers were either into bikes or cars, Motor, uh, not motorcycle bikes, but bikes when I was a child. And then when uh-huh. I was a teenager, then it became cars. So walking, huh. if I was sit, uh, in, you know, home in my home state where I was born and raised, I never went without a car. There was hmm. just too many cars, and they were cheap if I wanted to buy one. And if I didn't want to buy one, I always had ten or fifteen friends that had one. So, okay, let me borrow your car. Okay, let me drive what you get next. And sure, and you could borrow people's car. It was a different world. We didn't even have an, uh, mandatory insurance. Yeah, I do remember that. I think that I do uh, remember those days when uh, my parents were a little skittish about me. You know, because I am such a, you know, mm, uh, flash. Mm, well, no, <laughs> I'm. I have an unpredictable side that's capable of just doing about any damn thing for no fucking reason. When I was young, you know, I'm 16, so my mm-hmm. my mom made me a deal that uh, I'd insure for liability, just in case, even if somebody hit me. She said, "I'm more worried about them bumping you than you bumping them." Because I've been driving for years without a license already. I, I mean, I started out the way that they started to teach me how to drive. I, I think I told you the story on the door table. But, <laughs> excuse me, I had an uncle that was uh, using me for chick bait. Ah. And, and he'd put mm-hmm. me on his knee on, on when he was driving his car, and I'd be learning how to steer the car. And he'd use that to get girls. Uh, well, yeah, I know people. That, yeah, yeah, look look at the adorable baby in the car. There he was. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, right. It wasn't because I was so special. It was just that was the, the way that I was raised. 
and and a byproduct of it was the knowledge of the car. Yeah. Yeah, and and I is I would, but I'm small. I never was big, so being small always uh, made it more difficult. My father would uh, he would think of ways to uh, adapt the car. And when, as I was growing up, so by the time I was about, hmm, how old would I have been? I would say nine when I actually, he purposely had me drive a car where I was in control of everything, gas, the brakes, if it was a stick oh, or not. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. At nine? Yeah. Wow. I would say he started, started me about nine. See, and the farmer started driving the farm truck. Yeah, they had big when big he was five parking lots. Yeah, we went to the Ford parking lot where he worked when it wasn't open. It was a huge, gigantic open. Nobody had gates or nothing. They had inside security. They didn't mm-hmm. secure the parking lot in those days. No reason for it. And yeah, that's where he started me out learning how to drive the car. So well, the farmer had to learn because his dad was needing help and. And mm-hmm. so at five, you know, dad would take whatever piece of equipment to somewhere on the farm and, and he would have to get into the big farm truck and, and they'd set the choke and, and set a couple other things to where all he had to do was just start it. Didn't have to shift, didn't have to break or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. And at five years old, he's driving this big old honking farm truck out into the field. And then all he had to do was just turn the ignition key off. But... Yeah, hit the first car that he wrecked. I think he said he was eight or nine. The I first one he wrecked. Didn't do any of that. <laughs> I was always, uh, I would just call it aware. And I wasn't very reckless. There was a period of time where I did like to drive real fast. I would say real fast because it was like 90 on the interstate. That's kind of fast. Not too fast, but whew. anyway. Fast enough. But yeah, it didn't last for very long. I saw the light, so to speak, without wrecking in a car and uh, stopped doing it. But it was fun when I was doing it. Yeah. There, I've got a built-in. I'm telling you, ever since I was a child, I've always had this built-in just fuck with this system thing in me. Always. <laughs> when All right. The last time I ran away from home, I was 13. And I've, over the years, had to... Finally got it sorted out where I was that particular summer. And uh, what happened was uh, I decided I was on one of my tirades and I wasn't going to live with them anymore. So I split and I decided I'm going up I-5 north. And I got to Bellingham, Washington from L.A. hitchhiking. You know, and wow. Yeah, I was 13. But I would lie about my age a little bit so people wouldn't be so nervous. They go, wow, you're kind of small for your age. I know I'm small for my age. Okay. And I could just get along, get through that by saying that. Anyway, so I get to Bellingham. And that was before I decided to turn around. But uh, this couple is going to take a boat ride on this little river thing in Bellingham somewhere. And they invited me. They give me the ride to Bellingham. And they, hey, you want to keep hanging out? We're going to go have some dinner and take a boat ride you can come along so i went with and uh have you ever drove a boat before nope but i've driven a car so it's here to take over (laughs) so i'm driving you know the farmer got thrown in a situation like that too right but yeah exactly and and, but i grew up in a citified version of the uh, farmer's life because my dad was from the 30s so he grew up hard in Central California. Yeah. He wasn't a pampered little L.A. child like I was. Shit. They had a, they had a whole harder life. and the, But there was a lot of them. So it, it, uh, back in those days, the bigger your family was, the better it was. Not the smaller. The lesser of you there were, the less shit you could do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then they turned it well, around. Well, because there was fewer ideas to come up with. <laughs> and the government got a hold of that shit and fucked it all up in the 60s for everybody under the guise of change. Yeah. Change and freedom. While they stripped us of every fucking thing that we, we all had <laughs> since, it's just sad to see the 
it's like uh, I guess how maybe somebody from Iran would see or Iraq would see Iraq now after the states bomb the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and over into what? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. All these yeah. fucking wars are a bunch of crap. People are dying and killing each other. It's insane. But you know what? Somehow, because I don't know what because of, but somehow we're not directly involved in it. Somehow. Where we're aware of it, we know it's there, but we don't see it unless you look on the internet for it. It's not your face, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how does that make you feel about war? Because, I mean, does it give you more of an advantage? It's not your face. So you... What do you do about something that you have to physically be in to really make a judgment on it? Mm. See? Well, it's it's not necessarily that you have to physically be in it to make a judgment on it. But Would common sense I think, work? I think your I think your judgment <laughs> yeah. gets a little skewed. Mine or possibly possibly gets uh, more enhanced. Depending, because if you're off on the sidelines, you know, you don't know anything about it. You just read a headline or whatever. I personally think that's bad juju. I don't like that <laughs> shit. You guys got to cut that crap out. Yeah. But if it was really in my face st stuff going on, mm. oh, I would be hell on wheels. That's bad juju. Cut that shit out. Huh. So it, yeah. I don't know if it's more of an intensifier or a course corrector. You know, depending on the individual and what their initial thought is when they're not <laughs> in it, you know, when they're just reading the headlines of it. I just read a headline. <laughs> uh oh. From an earlier comment, Grim Grimner. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he did the story last night about the English are using um, toothpaste as a sexual. Uh, additive. <laughs> oh, and as the, a lubricant? Yeah, well, no, not as a lubricant, as an additive to enhance. And Why? Because they're idiots, because they can't read a fucking warning label, I would assume. The shit says on it, if you swallow it, you know, call a fucking doctor, you, you just ate poison. So why would you want to put it on your <laughs> On your Charlie and your Cha Cha. Don't make no sense to Uncle Charlie. <laughs> anyway. Well, I'm thinking, especially the kind that's, you know, got the, the mouthwash Wait a in minute. it. If you or... got that shit in your eye, you do the dance of the fucking ninja for about it, 20 minutes. Oh, Can you imagine oh, the or burn? Wait, let's get some of that stuff that's got the baking soda grounding. <laughs> on. Yeah, sandblast that puppy. And it's the no. shit with the fluoride in it. Isn't it? top of the whole thing it's just beautiful uh, well we're all kind by something there you go i'm not mm -hmm. i'm i'm laughing at myself too you know don't i got my addiction it's just like the next person but what i think i've got the edge on is the uh, antidote <laughs> yeah. there you go because nobody gets out alive so the best i'm gonna do is be physically fit while i'm here that, that in itself is the whole fucking thing. As pain-free as humanly possible. <laughs> Everybody else wants cars and homes. and Me, I just want to be pain-free. Be able to walk down the road. Yeah. And I get it. Yeah. If I ask for more, I'll get more. But the more that I f see the, my experience with life, the more that I want, the more I, I'm a slave to what I get. You know, like yes. ha having a car so you don't have to walk is replaced mm -hmm. with maintenance and cost and cleaning and maintenance and cost over and over and over and over. And we all know that. And so, you know, I didn't see it as a burden when I did it. Right? It was being yeah. away from it that changed my attitude toward it. So I think See and you sound like my mom now. Of course oh, my no. mom never <laughs> liked driving. She never liked driving anyway. She didn't learn to drive until she was like forty five or forty six. Hmm. 
And then when she had her little run in with the library, quite literally, mm. um, it's it scared her so bad because she said, I know there's lots of people that walk down this sidewalk and me having my foot slip off the brake and hit the accelerator and just seeing that I could have squished someone between my vehicle and the library wall. She so she gave up driving. She you know, they weren't asking her to or any of that stuff. But she said, you know, it's amazing how much money you save because mm. she walks everywhere. And if she, mm. you know, if it's too far to walk, then she has the access bus come get her. Yeah. Or if she has yeah. to be there on a, at a certain time, then she has one of us kids take her. And go. then she just has the access bus come pick her up and bring her home. So and it's two dollars to ride the access bus. Costs a lot more that to drive yourself. Oh, yeah. So what I mean is. is you know, they've taken a thing that was once upon a time so free and, and, and affordable, like driving a car, and they've turned it into the shit we have now. And it's just fucked. That's what I think. Yeah. You know, because yep. I had the luxury of, of the time that I was in it was so, it was so less restrictive and so... Uh, the uh, the appearance of freedom was mm, better, I would say. It seemed more free than it does today. You know, well, that's even, because they've been turning that heat up incrementally since then, too. And, yeah, yeah it probably yeah. was a little bit more free. Didn't well, have quite so many regulations. Yeah, that's – yeah. So I'm, it's not just the me thinking I'm all tied into this game, but it's the actual change that they do put on us in society eventually. They're going to get yet something. They got me with marriage. Okay. Now I'll sign the damn papers. Fuck. I mean, if it's going to make this whole thing easier for you and your damn lawyers, sure. But uh, that, uh, if there was a way around it, I would have took that. But there wasn't. Yeah. Well, there's a, see, that's what I mean about my reality is not your reality. Mine is how True. far am I willing to go to, to, to do what I want to do and still be a non-compliant, you know, chink in the fucking machinery. Cause my goal is not to work with this fucked up, horrible machine that I'm stuck in. I don't like it. It's, it's a mean machine. It could be done better. And the reason that I say these things now, well, it's obviously because I met sir. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know? And whatever, whatever course life has got me on, I'm enjoying it. So I'm having a good life. Lucky me. And it's wild. The world is falling apart with all these problems. Chemtrails, inoculations, GMOs, fluoride, on and on and on. Oil-based products. You know, uh, the future crap they want to throw down everybody. <laughs> 5G. So life could look grim and, and dark, but I don't see all that big stuff. I see a little tiny corner where I'm at. Nothing's going to happen here. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. And so. If I lived in a major city, I don't think I'd be so calm and collected. I think I'd be in a panic about how the fuck to get out of the city. Because <laughs> I know me. I know how I think. If things don't feel comfortable where I'm sitting, I get the fuck up and go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Duh. Duh I, says I'm that you live near, I'm a, aware. near a mass transport. Painfully aware. I, geez, I know. I'm aware. But that's, you am aware. that's just the, the draw of the... I didn't pick this. It's, the whole thing just happened <laughs> i don't know. yeah you did pick it it well, just wasn't a conscious no i mean thing. i didn't it choose it i didn't choose this place out of a choice of places this was where cirque was i didn't give a shit where it was i was just glad it wasn't you know like africa or some fucked up place she was in a central you know decent place i was close enough to go hey i'm gonna come meet you and see if you're really real <laughs> Because, you there know, you internet people, eh? I've met a lot of people on the internet. Jeez. I met Kelly at a grocery store where she worked. 
there, you know, you meet people. So then you nose to nose meet them, and they're usually the same. I mean, hell, Don C was meeting Woody. Wow, just recently in the summer, you know, before the summertime. Uh huh. Or during the summertime in uh, Tucson for lunch. Just the box, like just the other day. Yeah. yeah. So I guess the things that have your attention deserve your attention. And they're all different. You know, you're going to see this that way. I'm going to see it this way. It gives us something to talk about. Me and you don't usually fight too much. Except this Greta thing. I want to debate the Greta thing. Because I, I agree the girl is autistic. And I also agree that she's limited in her abilities to do certain normal functions because of an illness. But I also believe she's been pimped out by her freaking parents. Oh, Beyond yeah. all the what's good or bad for the little girl. Her parents did this. So I thought if you want to, you know, Greta gets her way some more, that's my stand on it. You got something to say about that, little missy? Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I, I most definitely think her parents encouraged her fear mm. and fed her fear mm. instead of correcting mm. Or pointing out that there is this aspect that you can look at, too. And then there's also this aspect that you can look at, too. Because even though she's got Asperger's syndrome or Asperger's spectrum, autism, whatever. I mean, I've said it before. Still, I have, a, Mary, nephew that, you're going I have to... a nephew with Asperger's. And you know what? It's if not... you sit down with them yeah. and logically. That's not where I was going, Mary. Them, I know, but what I'm saying is if you sit down and you logically explain to a child with Asperger's, they will be able to reason it out. So it's not necessarily that there's something really wrong with them. It's just that their filters are different. And yeah, yes, we, her parents are manipulating okay, there those we go. filters. Because okay, we made yes, that point I, already. I think it's a massive case of child abuse. Yeah. And I know there's an awful lot of people, and I, Circles called me out on it, mm. and granted, and I, I hate giving that little girl fit more another 15 minutes of fame, mm. but sometimes you have to point out that, you know, everybody's going, where's Epstein, where's Iran, where's mm. this? Why is nobody talking about these things? Mm. They're all talking about Greta. <laughs> And I know I've said it before. Why are we going to focus on one guy that ran a ring? Because that's not the point. No, 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 no. Bank trafficking children <laughs> and sexually abused people and all this other fun stuff. When you can put on the world stage for all the world to witness, there was a list. This Mary. child being child. This child being abused mentally. Yeah. But there was information you know, this guy went with that he had. He was a billionaire. Oh, he was entertaining the fucking rich, the wealthy, the I know, celebrities. Oh, I know he was entertaining the rich and wealthy. In and a sick the fucking rich and wealthy way. Yeah. Are, yes, and That's, they're hiding, okay. and they're able to hide now because okay, Little wait. Miss Greta now, got put on the hold stage. On, hold on a second. Let me finish, though. Okay, so okay. They, they've accused. Now, where did the proof go? <laughs> they accused well okay so they killed off the messenger all right well where's the message doesn't mean the words are gone where is the proof of the uh whatever they accused him of because i'm not sure what to call this mess i'm well, reading somebody's shit. got the proof but uh well right right but the guy died they he died in yeah. custody of the fucking police. Oh, so they say he died. Exactly. So they say. So now you got that on your mind. Or they either faked it or... I mean, wait a minute. When did we ever have a fucking government that didn't lie to us to put us in a position to talk about something like this in this fashion? You, you see what I mean? Or Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What happened? Because there was a time in life somewhere where when you spoke to another person, there was no fantasy about your story. There wasn't no magic bullet. You know, the CIA didn't exist. <laughs> you know, all these things that have come have changed it all. So we do what we do now. So they can do what they do, whatever that is. 
And we're so physically far from every fucking thing, most of us. You only see around you. So you rely on the internet or the news or something to keep you informed about what's going on. And that's all in a bunch of negative, nasty, horrible shit. So you'd be angry. <laughs> it's it's a fucking scam, man. Well, it all is. And I think, you know, I know it was a rhetorical question, mm-hmm. but centuries ago, yeah, centuries ago is when the ball started rolling. And it's just been incrementally getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. You know, and eventually people are going to say, okay, I can't push this bad boy up uphill anymore. I'm starting to feel like a dung beetle. Wow. And I'm going to be smooshed in shit here any minute now. Really? So I'm going to step off to the side and let all of you that keep want, want to keep pushing that ball of shit uphill, oh. I'm stepping aside and let you push it. I'm stepping oh. away from the ball of shit. Yeah. Well, it's a lot harder to do than it sounds. Oh, it is. Well, it's harder to do and mm-hmm. yet... But every when grain, you, when you set your mind to it, it yeah. really isn't. And every grain you don't feed it, at least it doesn't get that. But yes, it is fucking huge, and it's there, and it gets a lot of support, mostly from people that are afraid of tomorrow. I think the ones that don't live in the moment they're in, so much as the one where the terrorists are going to get them, or the illegal alien is going to murder them while they're getting their to, their tamales or something like that. Or the Muslim did it, or the Jewy bastard did it, mm. or the Mexican wetback yeah, did it, or yeah, the yeah. it's always someone else yeah. with some kind of plan. differentiating yeah. trait, whether and a plan. it was a religious or yeah. A, yeah, yeah, someone else did it. Yeah. Mm. Well, look at your hand when you're pointing that finger at someone else. And guess how many of them fingers are pointing right back at you? Twelve. Close. Okay. That's that's only with Common Core. Hey, at least I was listening. Yeah. Uh-huh, I could go out and start looking for a link. In link any case, this Greta thing, that's mm. that's it you're talking, you know, between Greta and, and all Epstein. Right, all right. It's one and, form of child abuse or another yeah, form of child well, abuse. This which, one is a little bit more subversive. You've they're left propping it up yeah. as a yeah. as a yeah. we're propping this child up and don't you pick on her, but okay, it's look, still child abuse. Look at who's doing it. Oh, Where is yeah. the money coming from to fund her? Soros or somebody like that? And she's not the first one. Right, but see, she's these not. these people, okay, the people looking on, us, all of us, okay, instead of being able to ignore something and not give it any meat, we're forced, because if you don't pay attention to it, it's still there. So you're you're forced to really make it real by discussing it. <laughs> it's a trap. We we can't win. There's no win to this. There's you understand the truth about how life is, or you don't, and you can have it any way you like. It's your life. That's free will. Yeah. Well, okay. Just like with anything else, if you stick your finger into a fire. There's a consequence to pay, depending on how long you keep your finger there. You know, if you accidentally brush against it, you're going to go, hey, and you're going to pull your hand back quickly. You're not going to, you know, be, hey, I'm going to go stick my hand in this fire. And No, that's not how life is. You know, we've got limits. We have um, guidelines that we live by. And when you treat other people the way you treat yourself, and maybe that's really the truth about how life truly is, is when when you're engaging with somebody else, they're treating you the way they treat themselves. Yeah. And that's up for interpretation. And it's a lot of fun sometimes. I have, well, I got a sick sign. Yeah, there's an awful lot of people that may say that they really, really, uh, they love people and they this and mm. they that. And I'm respectful and yet, and yet not. Because when you see how they, you know, if you don't respect yourself, you can't respect someone else. But words do not always represent an an idea completely. Sometimes an action, you need to see something because hearing about it is one thing, but seeing it done is another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and sometimes I, 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 not so much sometimes, but I'm daily, I get a reminder when I go out into the world, I get a daily reminder how comfortable life really is because there's no anger and pushing and shoving and hurrying. Uh, five cars in a row is a big line. It doesn't yeah. take very long. I mean, I just, they're the ones stuck in the car fighting the traffic, not me. I'm standing around with my finger up my nose, waiting for them to pass so I can cross the street. You know, it's the other way around. I, I've taken the, the pedestrian stand. <laughs> so I'm, yeah. look, I'm looking at the guy with the car as, wow, you poor fucker, you got stuck with that shit. But the person doing it, of course, has a lot further to go than me. And their responsibilities in life, they may need a car. I don't need one. Just me and Cirque and the animals. Yeah. Well, there you go. Cirque thought, thought all this through. We're within walking distance of social crap that we need to do. And away away from it. So we got a little privacy out here. You know, if I want to run around buck naked in my backyard, nobody's going to know. Because, for one, there's fences and trees every freaking where. But if mm -hmm. somebody was sitting in their house looking into my backyard on purpose, and who, what are they going to say? I was staring in his backyard the other day, and he come out butt naked. And the person listening to that would say, can you go, go away, oh, I'm busy, oh. That's not your business, oh. Yeah. No victim, no crime. So it, it, that those those you know basic guidelines to society haven't been broken yet. Where you've got thugs enforcing codes on people because they're enemies, you know. And that's what went wrong with home. I, I think it was Grim that was doing a story about it. It's maybe not Grim, but it was somebody on a RLM or something similar that was talking about it's not a it's not a police state. It's a it's like a military state. Might have been Clint Richardson or something like that. The Shalyak. Shalyak. Say his name right. Well, it is a police state, but it's not necessarily the ones with badges. We're all they have, yeah. they have, they have got the indoctrination going so well that yeah. everybody polices their neighbor now. Yeah, we're all in something to some level or another. It's a matter of uh, wow. It's just that outside, you know, enforcement that I, that's what I don't miss. The the suits and the, the cars. I don't re I think I've seen a cop car a month or two ago. I mean, it's sometimes it goes six months. I don't see one. And then I'll see one right then I, another month or two. And then not another six months. <laughs> so what a way to live. Yep. Well, well, I saw a sheriff's car this morning, but it was he was driving on by, and so I waved as he drove on by. <laughs> could, right, and see, when you live out in smaller places, could the lack of all that uh, drama have something to do with the interactions with the authority that we do have? Because, you know, when it's less crowded, people are just nicer to each other, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The less people there are, the more they're going to notice you being nasty to someone. So, yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, and then there's just ways to be, what do you call it? Apathetic. You can be apathetic in, in this public too, as well. Yeah. But, eh, I don't know. And it's not there's my. There's an awful lot of apathy in the bigger cities, I think. And then remember, but I was harping maybe on. That's just what I'm seeing. Right. But remember, I was harping on too that sometimes. Oh, I didn't say this part of it at the time. I was talking about shyness being misinterpreted. And once you, you weigh that into the equation, when, wherever area you're living in and you encounter people that you don't know, never seen them before, and they behave a certain way, sometimes they're shy. Sometimes they're apathetic and they don't even know you're there. <laughs> sometimes they're so full of themselves, you don't, you don't even exist. Sometimes... They're just in their day, and you're passing by. It's no big thing one way or the other. It depends on – wonder what does it – I think the, the wavelengths that you're putting out are going to bring you back some kind of response. 
And I don't know if it's possible to just go through without vibrating. <laughs> I don't think so. But there probably are times where you don't run into your own wavelength and you just get through it. Hmm. Well, there's times where you can go from one place to another and not run into somebody that you know. I, I get you've got it. Oh say, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not all yeah. the time, but depends on where you're at. Yeah, but then it's it's funny. You go like if I were to go to Denver or something and then bump into someone from hometown. It's mm. like, dude, seriously, small world. Mm. What the hell are you doing here? Same thing you're doing here. Oh, what do you, how do you know what I'm doing here? Mm. But, <coughs> excuse me. It maybe, is kind of crazy how that works. Yeah, maybe you're not doing anything. Maybe it just looks like you're doing something. And, you know, guilt by association and all that. Maybe I'm just wandering around. Admiralty Court Second does shooting. not allow freedom. You are not allowed. You can only wander within the confines of your protected freedom. What? Give me a... Get the... Are you out of your fucking mind? So, when you think about so, it, when, when people do something like uh, maybe get a speeding ticket and don't respond to it in court, do you consider that really a crime? No. Okay. Neither do I. But there's a lot of other people that because, well, if I have to do this, you have to do this too. Don't. S oh, yeah. I see that. all. I've been seeing a lot of that lately with mm. the taxes shit. You know, you see stuff and someone goes, I want to see your tax returns. By golly, you, I want to see how much taxes you pay. Okay, taxes are wrong. Doesn't make a shit and bit of difference if it's Greta Van Susteren, if it's um, what's-his-face crappy shifty, if it's Trumple Stillskin, or if it's your neighbor across the street. Taxes mm. are taxes. They yeah. are extortion money. Yeah. Yeah, basically. So basically. you're sitting there pissing and moaning and bitching mm -hmm. because someone doesn't pay as much extortion money as, as you, you do. What? I'm thinking, wait a minute wow. here. So you're basically pissed off because they've figured out a way to not, not have to pay it. extortion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And but the person that's upset doesn't know that's what they're upset about. They see it as it's labeled something different to make it a social thing. Pointing at this yeah. group. Yeah, they see yeah. it as you're not paying your fair share. Well, actually, my fair share hey, you is know, way less. You know, these, these people that sit in seats of decision in, in like states, senators, and congressmen, and shit like that, they get life pensions. Yeah. They get fucking paid for the rest of their freaking life. All right. And the guy that's living on freaking minimum wage out there in the fucking world, you know, or less is the he's the mooch now this guy's already been in business and been a politician and he let it go thank you no give it to the public then do these fucking greedy greasy lion cunts ever do anything for anybody do you see do you see a bill gates city where you know where indigents can start a new in housing, da, 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 all this shit billionaires should be able to do. But no, they'd call it what? Communism? <laughs> they'd, bolt, they'd fucking put, put him down for doing it. Well, it's like all these people. You have too much money, okay? Who died and made you the money censor oh, that decides who has loud. too much money? I just did. Who? I just said, well, I know, think Bill Gates got too fucking much money. And if that's what it's for, is just to accumulate and be looked upon, then it's serving no fucking purpose. It's just there. It's not even there, then. It's just an illusion. Yeah, but most of those people I, that, you know, have money, with yeah. quotations marks, yeah. they don't have money. It's on paper or actually right, right, all right. freaking so, digital. Oh, so you're agreeing with me. I thought I, we was arguing, damn it. <laughs> no, we're not arguing. I just... I, uh, these damn people would say those rich yeah. people, they should have to pay 90 some percent. Well, they, what? they had to pay 70% corporate in the government in the like seventies. And, uh, then they, they dropped it over the years to 15. So who picks well, up see, the slack is corporate, the rest of us. Corporate taxes are a completely different 
right. ball of wax. And, and they can't be paid in that kind of money by the people that are using the products that those people sell. It doesn't work. But they sell the concept, but you can't make it happen. You're getting a well, you're 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 getting the needle in the haystack by burning the fucking haystack. So oh, you you're know not how getting you get anywhere. a needle in a haystack? You, you go in burn there with it. a magnet. Oh, no, yeah. you get a magnet. The, I'm using my <laughs> idea as a way to explain how I see what's really going on, Mary. You could use a magnet, and it would probably be smarter, but instead they they choose to burn it down to find it. That's the oh, choice. Yeah. Well, I don't know what you're laughing about. It's quite sad to me. <laughs> it is. No, well, it's not. It's funny. How in the hell do you think they got the the personal income tax thing going anyway? Because they they turned a a um, corporation into a person so that they could therefore tax the person. Yeah, and not I argue mean, it. The way they... And not be able to argue that there's no law in court. That has no bearing. Wait a minute. How do you do this? So you're just being royally fleeced by the mm. most devious minds of, of the 21st century. And they've gathered to, to help you. <laughs> so if you feel yeah, help. You know what's really sad is those okay. devious minds mm. really don't know all that much either. They're just playing off of the playbook that they inherited. You think so? I disagree with you. I think they I, know. Who I think a I think there's an awful lot of these people that are quote unquote in power, although I don't necessarily give them any power over me, but all of a lot of these people that are in those positions of power, yeah. they don't have a freaking clue. Okay. But Mary, in history, who is promoted Tesla or Edison? Edison was, and you know, that's, that's like a lot of other things. You, um, Everybody says that Tesla is credited with creating the light bulb, but even Tesla said that he came up with a thousand different ways how to not make a light bulb, a working light bulb. So, mm. hi, but, JJ's. But, okay, y'all. Oh. So, the, the moral <laughs> of my story, little Missy, was going towards this. Um, Edison was more of a... Uh, he was the one that shoved in my face. Tesla was hidden. I wasn't exposed to him on purpose. I was exposed well, to the fraud on purpose. By that's because Tesla was Edison's apprentice for a while there. No. Yeah. 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 He he scammed. He Edison scammed Tesla out of about fifty grand for an idea, and then when uh, when Tesla did finally make it on his own, Westinghouse decided mm -hmm. they couldn't put a, a meter on it, so they were going to kill it. And that was the end of that. Free energy, it turned into profit for a few families, basically. And, oh, you got all these yo-yos that think they're, they're making 100000 a year on the, uh, on the stock exchange, right? Mm -hmm. And they think that's success, but it's the crumbs off the big people's table. And you live good on it. I'm not saying it's not, but it's not for one. It's fiat, and for two, it's not yours. They can take it any time they want. They call it what tax evasion. They can call it any fucking thing. And because you, when you sign those tax papers, you apply to pay. <laughs> they fuck you. Yeah. With it. They fuck you with your own uh, trust. You're, oh, they get you through the drive-through too. But so the, you, know. you know, but they build up that trust in this, you know, government. They did it to me. I had a driver's license. I was, I was legal once for fuck's sake, and then uh, I didn't start that way. I started out illegal, and then when I was sixteen, I got legal, and then when when nineteen eighty-seven, I went. You know what? Fuck this. I ain't doing this no more. But yeah. it was after I did it the last time to get a job because I wanted to drive an airport shuttle. But then after I was done driving the shuttle, I said, no, no more licenses. I'm finished with this crap. But life kept putting me in positions where I had to drive. <laughs> it was weird. I had a weird life. Yeah. Don't we all? Well, see, it's your accomplices that you know make the event what it is or what it isn't. Nothing in life is 
really all that enjoyable to me in solitude. You know, I'm I'm better off with a, either a partner or like Cirque, a partner or in business with somebody else that thinks like me or we're after the same goal, can think of new ideas, new ways to get to the same place, have fun with shit. And some people are just about money. And me, I like sometimes when I was younger, I just like to play with an idea to see if I could sell it and get a following and then sell the concept afterward and just dump it off on somebody else. But I was pretty generous with the one that I, I did that worked, and I just gave it I gave it away at the end instead of selling it. But, eh, see, greed and all that, I just never did feel that way about money. And some people are, wow, man, they never get enough. Count, they could count all day and all night. Ooh, look at me. I've got gold and silver. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I bought silver and it went down in price. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Don't don't sweat the fiat shit. Okay, it'll it'll be valuable when when it's needed. You'll you'll be glad you have it. So don't judge the ownership by the value of it right now. Fuck that right now. Oh no, no. Don't I go. I figure the silver that I've got, silver is useful for all kinds of things. So absolutely, you can't man, you can't lose with something stable like a metal. Come on. But you got to remember, too, you live in a good place where people know you. The Hordes, they're not going to go looking for you in Kansas. It's not going to be what's going to happen. You know, there, there won't be groups of, you know, brain zombies looking for a meal. It's not going to be like that. Oh, no, we've already got some of those here in this little burg. <laughs> Matter of fact, while I've been on the radio with you, my neighbor called on the phone. And so mm-hmm. I probably need to give her a call back. And do what? I'll find out what the heck you, she's... You want me to tell a, a quick five-minute tale of woe? I'll tell you. I'll, yeah, I'll tell you about my, my bar. The last, I was at the bar the other day. I had a, had a giggle, I guess is worth mentioning. Uh, you know, me and my lack of communicating with the locals. So... Uh, what happened was one of the locals wanted, he'd been just been to Brooklyn, New York, and uh, wanted to talk to me because I speak English and he'd just been to America. So I got brought into the conversation instead of, you know, coming in and, and taking it over and turn it at it, turning it into English. It was turned into English to, to for the other guy. There you go. And by doing things that way, I just think in the long run, they work out better. It's nice to be invited. You know, you don't, I'm not real greedy about all that. Sometimes I'm content just to go in there and have a beer and just sit and be left alone by everybody. And other times I feel chatty. And it's good to know that when you do feel chatty, where to go to the bar in that part of the bar, that's what people do. So... And I'll just learn more Danish as I go. But the Danish that I hear in Fredericksburg is different than the the Danish spoken in, in uh, like Copenhagen. It's a different dialect. And to an untrained ear, they, they sound different. But there's even, even the Danes say there's there's places that where they go, they can't understand two words they're saying. <laughs> so... It's like being from Boston and, and uh, or New Orleans, those two strikingly different dialects. You know, speaking the same uh-huh. language. Well, it sounds the same, but it's but it's kind of different because of the inflections and the way that Southerners yeah. say the word compared. Well, that makes it different, but yet it's recognized by another person as the same fucking language. With, you know, li- little more than an inconvenience, you know, because pock the car, you know, or uh, nude. Hat attack. Yeah. But yeah, I've never seen a hat attack. I don't know that I want to. I have hats in my house. I don't want them attacking me. Why not? Because that would just be creepy. Oh. I would have to sick the cats on them. Are you a sissy? Yeah. I don't want to be attacked by hats. Hey, Jay says he smells. Because they have bills. Hey, Most of them have bills. Hey, little, I don't want bills. Little Missy. 
Jay's mm-hmm. nines and Jay's says, smells screams, are you a mile off? I know, I know. It's because I was in a, well, duh, duh wow. says I was in a smoke shop. But I'm not wow. telling. <laughs> mm. Well, I can't smell you. Should I, should I be upset at this point? Upset, downset, I don't... Where, I, what I, stand I, does one take when their radio partner can be smelt in Scotland, but not in Denmark? <laughs> apparently, I, you need to get downwind. I was in Scotland for two and a half years. I never smelled you once. <laughs> That's because you were never downwind. Scotland is, it a, is north of here. You're upwind. It's a Scottish thing. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> on, on the globe, on the map, Virtually um, east, just a little tad southeast of where I started in Scotland. Because I'm hmm. east, southeast. Uh, yeah, just a tad southeast, but yeah. I, in my, you know, in the overall globe scope thing, it's not that big of a distance from Denmark to well. England, from Denmark to. Uh, Northeast Scotland to, you know, out beyond Inverness, east, north. <laughs> and if he knows, if he knows Scotland, he knows where Inverness is. I was a Northie. So the Shetlands are north of that. I almost made it to the Shetlands a few times, but never would make plans in some reason. They just never fall. That someone would come up. Just never went. I wonder why. Mm-hmm. Could have been like like those Scots gods keeping the Jew out of uh, you know out of the hollowed land <laughs> of Shetland. <laughs> Is that mind. where they grow those ponies? No, I was making a fun. No, I don't know where they grow them, but uh, Shetland Islands are uh, they're Scots. That's basically that. And the Scots are Scots. It's like Danes. Or Germans, or French, or Americans. Everybody from a country is usually pretty much that country, you know, to the out looking on to them. You know what I mean? We're not the identity thing with your with your fellow man is really usually strong. Ah, that's what I think. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that's what you think, then I'm happy for you. Well, what do you think? You're not listening again. Try, Are you reading again? I try not. Actually, no. Oh. I'm I'm listening. Right. I'm just kind of I'm just kind of sitting here listening, zoning, zoning, just zoning, zoning. And are you? You're not gander pondering or anything crazy like that. No, are you? that's a that's a Vinny thing. Ah, hey Vinny, I just wanted to give Vinny a poke in the eye because I can. You know, it's because most people let me do whatever I please. I'm like a, a, a gigantic child, in a way. And what's the in point? In a way? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in where, a way, you are. <laughs> yeah, in a way where I, I can be in social situations. And, well, in, in the States, where I, where I spoke the language and understood the customs and all that kind of shit, I could get away with murder with people with just by doing things and they would just not stop me is because I'm so small. All right. It was like the, the TVs on the, uh, (laughs) at this one particular bar I went to, uh, I could see the damn TV better if I was sitting on a part of the bar. (laughs) So I would actually sit on the bar and watch the TV and use the left side of me as the bar. (laughs) Ah. And the bartender was I was a personal friend of hers and didn't really bother her one way or the other and if people didn't like it, you know, there was two other TVs in the bar to watch. So it, But that's so unhygienic. I, I understand it would seem, but you know what? People just went, Well, that's just Lou being Lou, whatever. He he's just a little guy. Yeah, and I would attribute <laughs> it exactly because I'm not taken phys- as any kind of physical threat by my peers. So I'm always given this physical fucking leeway to do whatever I damn well please as long as I, I'm not an idiot about it and hurt anyone. But I can do off-the-wall crazy shit. And as I've gotten older, I don't do it anymore. 
it, it came and went in the time period I was in. Ah. And now I'm grown up. Now I go to the bar and I, I'm I'm a grown up with other grown ups. <laughs> Yeah. You're grown up with it. Oh. Yeah. I'm still the the, the long hair. Um, there's that American long hair guy, but the the group that's assembled there, uh, they're willing to, to engage with me. It's not like, oh, here's that fucking American. Oh God, what are we gonna do? It was. It's. Well, we agree with each other, and they. Luckily for me, they speak both Danish and English. Yeah. So, it's not well, a stretch for the, right, but it could be if they didn't speak English. They like, well, who's this? But that's so little of that, really. English is such a horse language. You know, you make a big. It, that's what I mean. Is we we were taught to make such a big deal out of it. It turns out to be dog Latin. It's a peasant's language, so that the the definition of your words don't really mean what you believe them to mean, because there's another dictionary. <laughs> And sometimes another spelling. So, wow. You know, you tap, you dab around that where, where you use spells and such all the time. Uh, but well, I know what you're talking about. Sometimes it's spelled the same but said differently. And just the confusion of that. How can you? I don't feel comfortable with things that are uh, so easily manipulated. You know, I like the words to be more specific and mean something than they do. Like when I write a blog, mm -hmm. I don't try. I try not to make it too bad, too wordy, long, long, long. You have to really think deep about anything. I try to make it very clear. And I don't know what you think. I've never asked you before. But now I'm going to ask you. What do you think? Because I, I write blogs over on realliberty.org. Uh huh. Well, have you ever read them? I've read a few of them. What do you think? Because I, I read yours. Well, yeah, I think but, they're blogs, I, and well, I usually either comment or do something on them. I don't ask me to remember. No, no, no. What, what I mean is, do you do you get a direct point, or do they just leave you in the same state that you were in when you started, or do you get an answer for like if it has a question, does an answer come to you? Well, mm -hmm. a lot of times I get where you're coming from, and then there's times where it's like I'll have to just sit and stew on that. But. Ah, because I wrote a new one called I Want to Be a Zillionaire. <laughs> well, I identify as a Powerball jackpot winner. but you know, uh, have, Apparently, yeah. people keep telling me I have to go buy a ticket. Wow. Well, I know. I'm just, I'm fortunate not to... Uh, Judge the quality of life <laughs> based on on uh, personal wealth and value. That's farthest thing from my mind. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I'm personal personal wealth is, is such a deception. You know, it can well, yeah, because it doesn't necessarily <laughs> excuse me have to do with money. No, but you the know, guy, when you have when you have true wealth, you have things that money cannot buy. Exactly, like and the guy that does the begging down at the corner to support his family in Romania, we know what what's going. On. Nobody here is like blind to what's going on. This is part of the society that we have. They just limit their uh, beggars. And this guy's had the spot and he's holding it. There ain't no room mm -hmm. to move. You replace him, but there's not going to be more. You know, the, it's very, hmm, I guess it would seem controlled, but I was just thinking, because uh, there's not a lot of ways to explain how a society just operates all by itself. You know, it's guided. It's got, you know, there's people accountable for shit. You follow me on yeah. this? But without, uh -huh. without enforced you know, guards and cars to do it, it still gets done. So how does it work? See, and there, there is, there is a big problem right there. As people seem to think that you have to have enforcers. Yeah. 
And they don't, because we get along just fine without police here. And there's people that don't, there's other people besides me that don't speak English, or don't speak Danish, or English. They speak a third language. And, uh, yeah. Well, as long as the population isn't outnumbered by any foreign invasion, the locals are, will, you know, they're willing to give a guy a chance, I think. You know, but uh, outside of that, they don't want to lose their, they don't want to lose the majority vote and be pushed out of their home. That's all I see. And like the Polish are just more uh, verbal about it. The, the Danes are legal about it. They, they talk with the money. And the Polacks just come right out and say, hey, we ain't going to have any of this shit here. <laughs> Fuck you and well, your immigration in the ass. No thank you. Well, you know, those, those, darn, those darn Poles. Right, but it's boosted their, their, in, their insides. They, things are doing better for them because they're standing up to what they don't want. In other countries where they gave in to the politicians doing what the politicians wanted them to do, the pop, the population suffered. And then it was eventually replaced with the incomers. Whole neighborhoods. <clears throat> no more you. All new people from another country altogether. It's like, whoa, what the fuck? So, when you take a step out of the reality of that's really happening somewhere, just find a place where it's not happening and go there. But do it soon because the walls and the fucking chains are going to start tightening any freaking year now. I would say 2001, but <laughs> everybody else thinks I'm crazy. So, <laughs> no, it's coming, well, people. You'll, you'll see. You'll see. You'll see, Lucy. Uh, see, and I just... What? I'm what? to the point now where it's like, why are all of these people going somewhere else to find some freedom or find some peace of mind or find some whatever? Why don't you, why don't you work on wherever in the hell you're at getting, you know, getting your peace of mind or, or freedom or whatever and, you know, fix the problems where you're at instead of going somewhere else and dragging your problems along with you because, by God, my culture... You know, well, if, wait a minute. That's kind of how you could look at me then. But I don't wave an American flag and force people to, you know, say grace to Trump or anything. You didn't. You didn't go over there expecting all the Danish people to just magically start believing all of your Americanized thoughts. Whereas well, there are some yeah. people that that no matter what country they go to, whether it's America or England or Australia or Spain or Mexico or wherever the hell they go, yeah, or wherever but, the hell they come from, no, a couple you know, of, they go there and they expect everybody else uh, to, you must do this. You must honor and cherish my culture. Like I honored and cherished it so much that I left my culture. Well, they wow. asked me what I thought of Trump and it, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to be, I wanted to keep it less less than 15 words. You know what I said, don't you? Trump sucks. Fuck Trump. Oh, well, okay. That, well, you were close, well, but no, I said fuck Trump. That was my whole... There was what I think of Trump. Two words. Well, see, you're... you're your way of saying it means that you're telling someone else to do this, whereas my way of is just making an observation of <laughs> his behavior. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, you're so you're so into the definitions. Well, there you go. That's what I mean. We've been all, all of us, me included, to some degree. I've been mis uh, misinformed, and now here comes the good part. Here comes a train wreck is when you get this idea in your head that you can communicate your way out of it or through it or somehow. No, every, you know where the problems in life all originate, every fucking one of them? With the first in, word. No, Words, they, every problem in, no, every, every problem anywhere originates inside someone. Me, then let me finish. Maybe you haven't heard the entire spiel yet, but I'm just oh, a little well, more to this. Oh, well, I interrupted you. Ha-ha, yeah. how do you like it? <laughs> it's it's kind of cool, little missy. 
any, <laughs> anyway, so, but all words that are interacted with, the good ones, the meaningful shit that matters, they mm-hmm. all end up in either physical or uh, written contract, verbal contract, some kind of an agreement between people. And, and we've been raised to believe that without the government, we'd all be fucking each other over while the people that supply all the big shit we need are all fucking us over. But where does the need, the government part ever come in? Well, and it's not, it's, it's the threat of the government stepping in. It's not necessarily the government itself. It's the threat of the government stepping in. And that threat is reinforced by those around you who say, well, you know, you have to do this because... I was looking at it from the deprivation of the government makes people afraid. That side of it. Yeah, yeah. Where it's still, it's still they're a more afraid. Of, they're more afraid of their own fucking choices they would make without something to blame for if shit went wrong. They're too afraid to do that, so they got government to be a cushion. Well, yeah, that's how that's, I see that's it. Where yeah. I, that's where I see liberals and conservatives are pretty much the same damn thing because either neither one of them, neither one of them would exist without a government. Really? Wow. I mean, both of them hmm. either have the government as their boogeyman hmm. or have the government as their enforcer. Wow. You know what? Neither one of them would exist without the government so therefore in their own special way they prop up the government so that they can have that boogeyman or that enforcer mm-hmm. yeah instead but, of taking the onus upon themselves to be their own enforcer of their own self and their own family yeah. they got to have someone else do the dirty work because i can't get my hands dirty i'm gonna make the government do it well I guess there's a real serious difference in the way that people interpret the word support, too. You know, what one person requires as support in their life, another person doesn't think twice of. They don't need that support. It doesn't interest them. So we're judging people by shit that's not balanced. You know, your lack of interest in this area does not make you inferior to me because I'm anal about that. It just makes us different, but we can't seem to get along in that way. That's not the way that works. We're always arguing about shit. <laughs> it's just, it's a, we're lame as a collective. It, it's not our fault. We're doing something wrong, though. All of us, not just you, talking to me too. But, yeah, but you know, every time someone says it's not our fault, hmm. I, I'm. You know, that can, that only goes so far. It's not. Well, that's kind of a vague, it's no, fuck you. Who cares any damn way? In the long run, you know, if you live up to your do no fucking harm, it's a physical thing. It's not, you can't control who's insulted by your damn opinion. That's not harming anyone. But you can easily keep your freaking hands off other people. And it's yes. so easily done. You can disagree with people all day and all night without getting violent. But there are those among us, Mary, you're not going to believe this. They like violence. Ah, see, they like violence, but they don't necessarily recognize violence. They, they see, the, they see <laughs> the violence that causes blood to spurt. Oh, but they do not see the they do not see the more subtle forms of violence. Hey, maybe next time we gather, if it's uh, whatever show it is, we'll pick up on that you know, and continue forward because we hit the end of in a perfect world with me tonight, Flash, and my co-hostage, Miss Mary. Sweet, sweet. Well, I just wanted to. You know, take advantage of you being available to do radio because you gave up the radio. And I had a little time. I wanted a little time off the radio myself. I took it. Now I'm back. Now it's a matter of two or three. And I don't know. I think I could do an hour while Cirque's gone Thursday and uh, just post it at the damn time 
that, uh, you know, I'm supposed to be live. Well, so I won't be live when I say so. whoop de doop dee But, then again, to those people out there that do like the live show, I don't know what's going on with numbers. But I know that we get a few people checking out the shit we do. Yeah. It's not yeah. like nobody knows we're here. It's just, we're just a small, we get we gather a small, unique crowd. Because we yes, cover we some real bizarre crazy ideas on this here uh, radio that we do anyway mm -hmm. uh do you want to do a lineup or do you just want to tell them to go look it up on real liberty yeah there's a schedule there and you can also go to the podcast page and catch up on ones that you did not get to hear like what is today is today's tuesday i need to catch up on my grimy leftover podcast don't I've be been... a meanie get your girl a weenie Hot dogs, You're armor welcome. hot dogs. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I did that yeah. for you, Miss Mary, on this Tuesday, the 8th of October, 2019, for the record. Sweet. Did just... you know that all these people that wear glasses have no fear? The end is in sight because <laughs> next year you will be 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. I had fun. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Hasta la taco, uh, muchachos. Yeah, and that too, baby.